Hello everyone, thanks for coming today. My name is Zhu Anzhen. Today I would like to introduce my capstone project. The title of the project is Wavelet Noising and Attention-Based RNN and ARIMA Model to Predict Forex Price. It can be seen from the title that I want to predict the Forex price using three artificial intelligence methods. These methods will be introduced in the following sections and let's start by knowing what a forex price is. I believe many people know about stocks, but may not be familiar with the forex. The forex stands for the foreign exchange, is a financial market similar to the stock, but much larger in terms of volume. The forex trading differs from the stock trading in several ways. Firstly, because traders work across different time zones, the forex market is open 24 hours per day and five days per week. Secondly, the high leverage mechanism is provided in the forex, which allows the trader to invest more than they have in their accounts. Lastly, the currencies are always traded in pairs and the prices are quoted in pairs as shown in the figure here. The left currency euro is the base currency which is always equal to one unit, and the right currency USD is the quote currency, and the exchange price 1.3 here is the number of US dollars worth relatively to one euro. The forex trading involves the two kinds of actions, either buy or sell a currency pair. If the exchange price goes up, we want to buy euro and sell USD, executing a buy order, and vice versa. Apparently, traders can only make profit when they buy at low price and sell at high price. The structure of the presentation is shown on the slide. Although the forex price change continuously, they are, they are collected at successive equal time intervals. We call this type of data time series. For example, the figure on the slide show the H1 Euro USD currency data that's collected every hour. Accurate price forecasting is of great value in forex trading and capital investment. As shown in the table, there are four types of prices, open, high, low, and close. In this paper, I aim to predict the future close price of this Euro USD currency pair. Fundamental analysis and technical analysis are two common methods for financial analysis. The fundamental analysis evaluates securities by considering the overall economy of countries, which is beyond the scope of this project. The technical analysis that only concerns the historical prices is widely used in the field of machine learning, hence adopted here. Because the market is highly volatile, the forex data always contain a great amount of noises and complex relationships, which can be both linear and nonlinear. Another characteristic of time series is the high order correlation inside sequence. These factors make the prediction challenging. When used a technique, when used a traditional machine learning method, the model can easily predict the mean of the series as shown in the left figure, or it intends to use the last price in the sequence to predict the future values. As shown in the right figure, the consequence are two parallel lines with the predicted line shifted slightly to the right side. To overcome the above difficulties, a hybrid model that integrates the wavelength transform, ARNN and ARIMA is proposed. The flowchart on the slide shows how the three methods are combined. The original data is the noise via the wavelength transform. After that, the ARNM model is trained and predict the next price. And the residual series between the ground truth and ARNM predictions can be calculated. The ARIMA model takes the residual series as the input and predict the future residuals on the test set. Finally, the two forecast results are combined to give the final output. 
Well, many people might ask why the proposed model work. A possible reason could be that the wavelet denoising stabilizes the data structure. Meanwhile, the ARNM model can capture the nonlinear patterns in the sequence, and the ARIMA can well fit the linear relations of the variables. By combination, the hybrid methodologies can take advantages in both linear and nonlinear domains, and hence effectively predict the time series. The discrete wavelet transform in practice is always implemented as a filter bank because when a time series is decomposed by the DWT, the original signals are separated into the approximation and the detail coefficients. According to statistical characteristics, the approximation coefficients with the low frequency corresponds to the useful signals while the detail coefficients with high frequency are recognized as noises. These detailed coefficients can be set to zero prior to a DWT reconstruction process in order to filter out the noise, yielding a denoised version of the original signals. The ARNN is the second method used in the hybrid model. Before I dive into the details, I want to discuss some backgrounds about the neural networks. Neural network as a deep learning algorithm is able to capture the robust and nonlinear correlations of variables. The recurrent neural network is a type of neural network that introduced the concept of time series into the design of network architectures, which is more adaptable to dynamic forex data. The attention-based encoder-decoder network is a state-of-art RNN that has shown great potential for sequential time predictions in recent work. In this paper, I want to analyze its efficiency in forex prediction. The ARNN model is shown in the slide. There are four core components, the encoder, decoder, attention, and output. Except for the attention, each of the rest three components is the isolated RNN model. The technical indicators and the denoise of closed price series are the input for the encoder and the decoder re respectively. The attention layer can take the output from the encoder and the decoder and convert them to some coefficient alpha. The higher the coefficient means the more attention the model will pay on those time sets. Given the weight alpha and the close price time series, the weighted sum can be calculated as the contact vector C here, which is then put through a RNN layer to get the final output. The ARIMA is a flexible and powerful statistical model that is great for the um, time series forecasting. Uh, the RIMA model takes in time series as a random sequence and approximates the future values as a linear, as a linear function of the past observations and the white noise returns. There are three components of the model, autoregressive model, non-seasonal differences for stationarity and moving average model, which corresponds to three hyperparameter inputs, P, D, and Q. The output of the ARIMA can be obtained by using the equations that show on the slide. In the experiment, I used about 25,000 hourly samples from the Euro-USD currency pair that's collected in the recent four years. And the last 1,000 samples are used for the test set. As mentioned in the introduction section, the technical analysis is implemented. Therefore, 16 technical indicators of two types were generated as the additional input. Three evaluation criteria are used. The MSE and MAP are two common matrix for regression problems, and the directional accuracy is calculated here because in real trading, traders can only make profits when they correctly predict the direction of the market trade. 
The table on the slide shows the experimental results of the ARNM model in comparison to some benchmarks with different architectures and input features. Two important conclusions can be drawn from it. Firstly, the wavelet denoising that improves the accuracy of each architecture is quite necessary. And the ARNN architecture is superior to the others. Meanwhile, the training time is acceptable. This confirms that the encoder-decoder structure improve the performance of the simple RNN model at a small computational cost. After combining the ARIMA, the hybrid model outperforms the ARNN model as shown in the table. To better understand the effect of the ARIMA, the price curves of some um, data points are plotted. From the figure, we know that ARIMA improves the model performance by reducing the gaps between the actual values and the ARNM prediction. In the conclusion part, I want to start by talking about the uh, trading time intervals. H1 data is collected every hour. M1 data is collected every minute. For the same time period, say four years in this case, the amount of M1 data is over 40 times of that the H1 type. With large scale data, the MSE and MAP for M1 data are no doubt smaller. However, given the experimental results, the directional accuracy of the two data sets are almost the same. In real scenario, the 77% directional accuracy cannot guarantee a profitable trading. More likely, the Results from the proposed model will give a guideline for the professional trader. The major issue when to deploy the minutes trading is the com expensive computational cost. When the traders obtain the results from the proposed model, they will need a more time to carry on some financial analysis before making the final decision, which is impossible to be completed in several minutes. Although the proposed model achieved good results, there are some limitations of, of the model of the project. Firstly, the discrete wavelet transform cannot guarantee uh, excellent denoise the result because it used the hot threshold to denoise the decomposed data, which could cause either some useful signals being removed or some disturbing noises being reserved. The wavelet transform with soft thresholds could be the future direction of the analysis. In addition, instead of using technical indicators as the input for the encoder network, we can consider use another deep, deep learning network to extract some interesting uh, features from the original market data and then set to the encoder. Lastly, in the experiment, I only tested the proposed model on the Euro USD currency pair. The future work should involve the to examine the model on more currency pairs. That's all. Thank you for your listening. Any questions? Back, back. Can you just explain the squared error to me? Okay. Uh, we know for a typical regression problem, we will just uh, predict um, a price series. So for each each observations, we get the uh, actual price and we get the predicted price. The mean square error is just um, we use the actual price to minus the uh, predicted price and square them. For each observation, we can get the difference, uh, the, the square of difference. Then for n observations, we add them together and divide the n. And what is n? n is the number of observations you have. Hey there. 
Um, obviously, there's a lot of uh, different technical indicator that is available in the world. Yeah. Um, you have chosen 16 technical indicator. Have uh, what what make you choose these two particular groups of indicator? Okay, um, I choose these two types of uh, indicators because I read through some uh, literatures, and be um, before I use the technical indicators, I found that the MSC and MAP values are satisfied, which means we can get small values, small errors. But the, the problem is the directional accuracy. The directional accuracy is really low. So it means when I add technical indicators, I want the model to learn like what's the future direction. I want it to detect the future direction. And in the literature, the, uh, some, some financial analysis, they say, the momentum and the volatility indicators are two types of indicators that are good at telling the direction of the forex data. So I use these two types. So 16 technical indicators because I use the TA library in Python package. That's the all technical indicators in these two types. Yeah. Uh, so I had one question. You used RNN with attention. Yeah. So that is theoretically that should resolve the gradient vanishing gradient problem of RNN. But did you consider using LSTM with attention? Because in many fields, LSTM gives better performance than RNN. Yeah, I consider that problem. So based on my uh, experimental results, you can see that RNN, GRU, and LSTM are three common algorithms you are use for dealing with the time series analysis. So you can see from the results, the, um, the, when we compare the RNN to the LSTM, the direction accuracy doesn't actually increase too much, like 51.4 to 51.7 or 58.4 to 59.5. But the training time you can see increased dramatically. So considering the computational cost and also um, without too many improvements, I decided to use the RNN instead of LSTM. I think a possible reason that the LSTM is not performed very good here is because I use the 10 window size. So if I use longer sequence, might the LSTM perform better? Thanks for that. Uh, 10, 10 window size is the same for the RNN as well. Yes. So then it's a fair comparison. Mm -hmm. All right, so if there's no more question, we thank Sana. Thank you very much. Thank Over. you. Thank you.